Hi, this is Frank Shamrock, MMA legend, UFC superstar, and you're listening to MMA Crip Fighting Talk. Gregory Stone, MMAcrypt.com. On today's show, I'll be speaking with Invicta Atomweight Champion, the Karate Hottie, Michelle Waterson. Michelle is set to defend her title against Shizuko Tamara, September 6th at Invicta 8. Uh, with that, welcome to the show, Michelle. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's my pleasure. Now, I, I know that you was on the MMA hour with Evie Lawani uh, before. I've not had a chance to watch that show yet, so my apologies if he asked the same questions that he did. Obviously, I think he's been grilling you today, so my apologies if he stole some of my questions. Well, technically, he hasn't stolen my questions, but um, I, I don't like repeating uh, questions to fighters. But uh, well, anyway, let's get uh, started. No problem. With the, uh, let's start out with the UFC fight pass and Invicta deal. Um, what do you make of a UFC uh, picking up Invicta and sticking it on UFC fight pass, Michelle? I think it's a great partnership. I think it's only going to propel both companies and, um, you know, sky's the limit um, to what um, the two companies are going to be able to do together. It's technically like you're part of the Zuffa family now, Michelle. Um, technically you're not, but uh, it's sort of like you are. Do you feel like you're part of the UFC and Zuffa family now? I do. I really do. You know, they've kind of taken me under their wing. They they flew me out to the UFC offices earlier um, this month, and I, you know, I got to meet everybody that's um, involved with UFC Fight Pass. I, I did a bunch of media that day, you know, and they, they I think they really want to get behind Invicta and supporting the um, this uh, women's uh, MMA movement. I think it's great. Well, I've just been checking out the Invicta 8 trailer. Um, I don't know how much the UFC are behind that, but it looks really good. Have you seen the recent trailers for Invicta 8 and what do you make of them? Yeah. Uh, those trailers are always the best, and I think that um, Shannon has a good group of people behind her. Um, and this this card is stacked, and I think that each fight is going to be able to... could be a show on its own. There's so, been so many girls so eager um, for the next Invicta show to come out, and I think that um, all the girls that are um, on the card, Invicta 8, are going to come to perform, for sure. Do you feel like there's sort of added pressure? Because you mentioned there's been such a delay in Invicta cards. Obviously, there's going to be new fans who are tuning in, because obviously with the Ronda Rousey thing breaking out, you know, she's turned into such a star. Women have come on the map. Um, so there's potentially a whole bunch of new fans will be tuning in. Obviously, it's on UFC Fight Pass, so even more exposure. So do you feel like there's sort of more pressure, especially with you headlining the card, to really put on a show for this Invicta 8 card? Well, you know, I, I think it's great that there's so much more attention coming to uh, women's MMA. Um, and yeah, at first, there's a lot of pressure. But, you know, I'll try to fight once the first you know, once the first once the first punch flies, then it kind of all just reverts back to like your your natural instincts. Well, it's your first title defense too. Uh, excited about that. Obviously, you've had the belt all this time, not been able to defend it. How's that been? I you know I I really am excited to to have a title defense. I feel like being able to do so will kind of allow me to, well, legitimize my belt. You know, a lot of people say that you're not a true champion until you've defended your belt at least once, so I'd like to do that. Uh, well, we did mention the long layoff between Invicta cards. Um, have you have you been with the layoff? Um, you know, you've been missing prepping for a fight. Have you, you know, managed to do some things that you didn't get to do while you was in fighting? Yeah, you know, I, I think that not... Having such a long layoff has allowed me to work on the things that I normally don't work on when I'm in fight camp. I think every time some, you know, somebody's in fight camp, you kind of work specifics um, depending on what your opponent does. And not having an opponent in front of me really allowed me to kind of strengthen some of my weaknesses uh, and just work on the things that I really wanted to work on my own, myself. Well, you talk about the things you've been doing inside the gym there, Michelle. Um, obviously, with the layoff, in between fights, have you managed to do some of the things outside the cage that you've, you know, sort of missed doing? So, sort of like, I can imagine being a fighter. Obviously, the first thing is obviously eating the junk foods, etc. Um, have you managed to do some <laughs> of the things you, you want to do outside the cage? Yeah, it's so hard. You know, uh, I think at the beginning of my career, as far as diet goes, I, I was a very yo-yo fighter. You know, I'd go up and I'd go down. 
But I think it's important to remember to um, really take your craft seriously. And, and, and I think with this year I have, and I've managed to stay really healthy, put on some good muscle, and, and hopefully your show will come September 6th. Hey, you put on some muscle. Well, that's yep. funny. It's, it's funny that you say that because I was checking Tamara out before, and obviously they've got her down as a submission specialist. And um, for me, she doesn't look very strong in the wrestling, so I'm finding it hard as she could literally take you down to the mat and even work any submissions. So if you're looking bigger and stronger, and you're physically a lot stronger, um, I'm finding a, I'm finding it quite impossible to see a way that she can win this fight. <laughs> well, that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> um, oh. You know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I've really been wanting to just be able to keep it standing up, and I've been working my um, my wrestling defense a lot. And so, yeah, you know, if we can keep it standing and, and give the crowd a good action-packed stand-up fight, I would love that. I was just checking up on Tamara before, and um, record-wise, uh, she just. If you look at her opponents, they've got like records of eight wins and fifteen losses. I know records don't mean a lot in this sport, but um, you know, judging from that, and you know, I, I sort of feel like she's a, a couple of steps below you in terms of skill sets and you know, just mm -hmm. all general what she can do. Um, plus, she's been mm -hmm. fighting two round fights as well. Um, yeah. Would Would you agree and sort of think that she is a step or two below you in terms of uh, actual skill sets? Well, you know, I, I, I don't ever want to um, downplay any of my opponents or over overlook them because, you know, I feel like a lot of, especially the Japanese fighters, they just fight whoever and whenever, you know. It, it's, from what I understand, she took a lot of fights last minute. She took a lot of fights against bigger girls. And um, I do I do think I'm going to have the upper hand when, as far as uh, stamina comes because I... I have been getting prepared for a five-round fight uh, since before Jessica, because I was I was the contender coming up to fight Jessica. Uh, um, but you know, I think she's she's ranked number six, and I think what's dangerous about her is that she really doesn't have anything to lose. She can go in the ring and not, you know, have a care in the world, win or lose. Like she just leaves it all there, and that's that can be lead for a dangerous fight, you know. Uh, I want to stick on the Invicta 8 card for a second. Uh, Jin Yu Frey, uh, she's going to be fighting on the Invicta card. Um, now, there seems to be a whole lot of hype around her. Um, is there a fight against Jody Escabel, something you're going to be keeping a close eye on? Oh, yeah. Jody Escabel is a teammate of mine, and so both of us have been training really hard, and um, uh, I expect Jody to come out with that W. Well, she's going to knock a contender off for you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, staying with the Invicta 8 card, uh, Stephanie Egink will be facing Katjerk and Camper for the vacant strawweight title. Um, how do you see that one playing out? I think Stephanie's a really big 115er and, uh, and she has really good boxing and she uses her length well. So uh, I'm going to go uh, with Stephanie. Well, obviously, the Invicta strawweight title was vacated when all the women went to Tough 20. Now, we do know that Jessica Penn went over to the show. Now, obviously, you beat. Jessica Penn for a title. Was you ever tempted to maybe go on top twenty, or was you just happy sticking out in Invicta and making a name for yourself there? Um, you know, I, I feel like at the moment I have a lot of things that I still want to accomplish uh, with Invicta and at the one hundred five division. I want to be able to say that I've you know beat everybody that I could in that division before I go trying to venture off into other things, but. You know, I always tell people that um, if a, if the opportunity presents itself and it's the right place and the right time, then I'm more than happy to to look into those opportunities. You know. Uh, no, I noticed that you've been getting some hard training in with uh, Master Ken. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I had to mention Master that. Ken. I had to mention him. Uh, now I have to <laughs> ask: Will you be using the elbow copter in your upcoming bag? <laughs> <laughs> if if I could, if we go into the later rounds, I might have to use the elbow copter. <laughs> oh, seriously! If you try the elbow copter, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be jumping and screaming and shouting everywhere. I can't see it personally. <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't know. Do you know it could be effective. You know, I checked out the blooper. Really, actually, knocked the guy down a bit. So you never know. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> the chances I've seen a fighter use that in an actual fight, I really can't see it, but... <laughs> um, have you found out what um, Yuzuko Tamada means in Japanese yet, Michelle? I have no idea. I... <laughs> He is the best at just catching me off guard and, and making me look silly. Oh, he's crazy. Um, I have to ask, how did you end up yeah. meeting Master Ken? Because, you know, he's a bit of a crazy character. So he's not like the regular person that you meet off the street. So how did you and him end up meeting up, basically? Well, he is actually a local here in um, Albuquerque, New Mexico. And he actually worked with Julie and Coach Jackson. And... Um, Julie kind of recommended me uh, if he was looking for somebody else um, to be featured on his show, and he contacted me through um, Jules, and and uh, this is the second show that we've done together, and I, I had so much fun working with him. Well, obviously he does parody shows, he's more of an actor, but is he a real trained martial artist, or does he just do this for fun, messing around? I think that he... I, you know, I don't even, I've never really asked him. I do think that he has martial arts background. But, um, and, and, and the guy that is always in the videos with him, yeah, he actually owns a, a martial arts studio uh, with, a, with a kids program and everything. So, you know, he has tons of respect for, for martial artists and what they do. And he just um, has, a, has a good time making fun of us, too. <laughs> Well, to any listeners, it literally crapped me up. I've only just found his channel today, um, thanks to looking for some material to talk about with you. So I'm literally going to go and like, have myself a uh, Master Ken week. So <laughs> no interviews, unless it's probably Master Ken. I might even actually ask him for an interview. Um, oh. <laughs> get, get some background on Master Ken. That should be fun. But um, to any listeners, yeah. please check out his channel and subscribe to it. It's uh, Enter the Dojo Show on YouTube. Absolutely hilarious videos on there. So I'm looking forward to checking out some old videos of his. But um, um, is there anything you'd like to say to the listeners who'll be tuning in and watching Invicta 8 on September the 6th? Or would you like to say anything to the listeners who don't have Fight Pass yet and um, why they should um, subscribe to Fight Pass and watch Invicta 8? Michelle. If you don't have Fight Pass or you have to get it, um, the show is going to be epic. It's going down in history. All female fight cards and the card stacked. So, you know, you're really missing out if you don't watch this card September 6th. And on top of that, um, you know, if you're, a, if you're an MMA fan, UFC Fight Pass has almost any and every single fight you can ever think of. And it's just, I think, a really good place to go if you're a student of the martial arts to study there's so there's a huge encyclopedia of fights um and um i love going on there just to study fights okay from the mma crit fighting talk show thank you for watching